Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Gran Soda Minimum update. Thursday, February 7th, 1 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at heavy models. Heavy. Deep models. What I mean by that is snow. Deep snow. North America. Heads up. Piling up. And piling up. And there's your... Valentine's Day forecast, which is not a schmorecast. Let's walk it through. In the next 36 hours, heavy snow is going to fall through Wisconsin and up into Ontario. Not to scare you, yo. You're not going to be left out, Iowa. You're getting hit right now. Hit with the... And then heavy snow is forecast to dump. Into the lowlands of Washington, heavy snows in the mountains of Oregon. Take a look at the Sierras. Oh my goodness. And the second system will move through, and then a third system, and everyone will be buried. 40 states picking up significant snow through the second week of February. What do I have to say? Keep calm. It's boom time. Another two to three feet of snow brings the current storm total of 79 to 117 inches. That's just about 10 feet since Saturday. Which was the beginning of your splatter day. Main Lodge at June Mountain will remain closed <coughs> until they can get unburied. <laughs> Blizzard conditions, snowfall strong, damaging winds are expected today with clearing skies, hopefully tomorrow. Look at this. That's the lodge. Are you kidding me? That's, it's in there. It's in there like swimwear. That is a mammoth of a mountain. Holy macaroni. Weather authority record-breaking snow possible Thursday. Lando Lakes. I love that butter. 7 to 11 inches of butter up there. Thanks, Al. You prick. Eagle River, Rhinelander, Iron Mountain, Hayward. Medford, you're buried. Second winter storm will begin to impact the state tonight. Light snow will begin to fall early during the overnight hours. Northwest Wisconsin and freezing rain will impact the southeastern part of the viewing area. One to three inches of snow accumulation will be possible early by tomorrow morning. And then it will get real. Ow! Jesus Christmas. Well, there you have it. Snow totals, Twin City sees over four inches. Those were cinches, but the rest was already there. That looks a little bit more like four than four. Eau Claire sets daily snowfall record all time. Snow blanketed the Twin Cities metro and much of the central and southern Minnesota Tuesday, causing traffic headaches, early school dismissals. The airport picking up 4.1 inches. Wisconsin received 7.7 .7 inches of snow, setting a new daily snowfall record in the city for February 5th according to the National Weather Service. The Twin Cities could see more than three to six inches in their future. We're going to check the models momentarily as we allow the slow internet. Ow! You prick. Laughing all the way to the bank, you skank. Forecast is in. Keep calm. Widespread snow likely Friday. Confidence grows in significant winter storm up in Washington State, which has already received record snows. Seattle. <clears throat> As the snow from our first snowstorm continues to gradually melt away this week, all eyes are turning towards the storm later Friday to replaster the area in a white blanket. Now, a friend of the channel has sent me some detailed information on the storm, and we're going to get to that. We're going to walk you through it, so stick with us. It's quite a ways away. Widespread western snow brings dazzling vistas and dangerous roads. 
Landon actually digs his car out of the snow Wednesday in Salt Lake City. Not looking pretty. Heavy snowfall triggered a rare snow day. Thanks, Al. A vast system that brought snow and cold to normally milder cities, including San Francisco, Seattle, Salt Lake City, even L.A. Oh, I'm sorry, Las Vegas. <laughs> was moving eastward into the central part of the country on Wednesday. The country's midsection from New Mexico to Mish was blanketed in frozen precipitation. The system caused treacherous travel, shuttered schools, and even closed ski resorts. Are you kidding me? A pretty strong and mild upper-level trough triggered by global warming is responsible for the system that brought significant snow to the west in low-lying areas this week. According to Mark Chenard, a total D-bag that claims he's a meteorologist at the Weather Prediction Center who told NPR globalists and schmucks who perpetuate the global warming lie added that a large area is seeing some type of wintry impact because Al Gore was right. It's global warming. Frozen raindrops from thunderstorms, grapple, and others you've never seen before is because the planet is warming. Nerd alert. Several inches of snow fell over the parts of the Pacific Northwest. Video is unavailable. Keeping students at home in Portland, Oregon. School districts. Districts across Utah canceled classes Wednesday amid several inches of snow. Ho, ho, ho. Santa's long gone, the Salt Lake Tribune reported. It was the first time in some two decades. That's 20 years if you don't have the mathematical degrees that I do. Yeah. 100 crashes, which were considered smashes. Right there. Reported across the state which is not great. A Rich County deputy was investigating one of the crashes as a truck ramp earlier in the day when a semi coming down the grade lost control and struck him. The deputy suffered serious injuries. According to the Utah Department of Public Safety, the tractor trailer driver was totally loaded. And that's tonight's first boom. Do not drink and snow plow, drive, whatever. <laughs> there are so many people that want to take advantage of the fresh powder. They're either skiers or coke addicts. And we have no connectivity. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Whoa! We're going to get to these models. Whew. Holy sh... Great lakes are buried. I mean, do you remember Bob and Doug McKenzie? Do you remember those guys? <clears throat> Do you remember the Great White North? It's nothing but beer and donuts over in this land. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. Beer and donuts time. More Pacific Northwest snow ahead, including Seattle and Portland, which will be your shortland. Another Midwest, Northeast wintry mess to follow. Holy sh The February snow and ice parade continues into next week. Ow! Bring me my cake and pack my bowl. More snow is headed towards the Pacific Northwest Friday and Saturday. Just days after Starling travel in both Seattle and Portland, Oregon, this will kick off another expansive wintry mess of snow and ice across the plains, Midwest and East into the weekend into next week. Holy sh snowfall outlook deep Seattle buried Yakima. Holy Smack em a Baker City. Put the pie in the oven. Bake it. Boise, you're getting off flight. But the mountains just east of Eugene and Portland, you're not in the Shortland. <laughs> and you could bend over, Oregon. Heads up. Furthermore, this colder pattern is expected to remain in place, which will make it a disgrace in the Northwest into much of next week. Global warming much? Potentially more rounds of low elevation snow breaking all-time records ever recorded since the mini ice age. Burn your sage. Get those evil spirits out of your house. In these areas, high temperatures might struggle to rise much above freezing next week. 
and morning low temperatures will likely dip well below freezing in areas where you don't even know what that means. This may lead to refreezing of roads at night and some fright, including some thawing during the day, potentially leading to significant black ice. Here's your Sunday night's outlook. Bleak in the east. Cincy, Louisville, Charleston, your flux, St. Louis, Chi-Town, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Washington, snow in Boston and New York, all the way out to Syracuse. All the way up to Minnie, Marquette, Green Bay, buried. Whew. I'm not even making this up. I'm just repeating what other people have said. <laughs> Where are my donuts? Steve! Oh, shit. He forgot them. Oh. I think they were drinking Tuborg, if I'm correct. Someone correct me on that. Some cheap shit from the 80s. Slow-moving Arctic front could bring heavy snow from South Dakota to Upper Michigan. We don't even have video. A slow-moving Arctic front anchored in the Rockies, which just buried us today. Blizzard conditions drifting. 10 to 24 inches up high. We had 4 to 12. It, de it depended on where you stood down here. Because the wind blew it through a tiny crack into my barn. It made a pile. More than half a foot of snow is possible from South Dakota through Minnesota and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan Thursday. Put a jacket on your dog, you and pricks. Almost three dozen states were under snow, ice, flooding alerts, and freezing rain hit southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, freezing the cheese, parts of Michigan, freezing the crack cocaine. About 350 schools in Detroit were closed Wednesday because of the ice storm and a meth epidemic. I make shit up sometimes. That's why I have a new channel. Go over there if you're worried. Now, here's the secret information you've been waiting for. <clears throat> I'm going to start talking the first person, and I'm not even this person. I have studied Northwest snowstorms for years and even co-authored a paper on the subject. What is forecast to occur late Friday and this weekend is absolutely classic. And Al Gore can suck it. I forgot to put that in there. I will start by showing you the latest forecast of the upper Washington high resolution weather monitoring system. The 24 hour accumulation ending 4 p.m. Friday shows the snow moving into the northern portion of Washington. Heavy snow already falling in southern BC. In the Puget Sound region, you may be able to get home before the real action hits. And then you'll be facing the sh and there is no resolution on this, but all these colors mean holy macaroni Friday. The snowfall over the 24 hours is extraordinary with up to eight inches over the Puget Sound and over a foot. Look at this. Holy crap. There's like three feet out in the Pacific. You'll be buried out there if you have a boat. Holy. There's like 20 feet here. Uh, in Oregon. What is this? Mount Hood is Mount Buried. Holy sh... What is orange? What does that mean? Yeah, that's like... Ho that's a lot. That's bigger than you think. That's big. The setup for this snow event is nearly perfect. I can only read this. <laughs> With a low center near South Washington, tip of Washington State, very cold air over British Columbia. It's the perfect storm for Seattle. The reason why this is the perfect snowstorm situation is that the low center draws cold air into western Washington from BC through the Fraser River Valley while pushing moist air overhead. A veritable snow machine. As if I was a beauty queen. Or I could click on it and something would happen. Boom! Holy sh... That's the perfect storm. It looks really bad over here in Montana, to be quite honest. I'm not that honest. Yeah, I'm constantly honest. The UW model is driven by the USGF and the other Fs of F and amazingness. 
And even more snow by through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which is your Thursday. Look at this forecast. ECMW total snowfall equivalent. Holy sh... 38. Pack a bowl. It's about to get serious. Look at this 24 inches here in the Olympics. And heavy snow everywhere where they never get snow. That is a veritable ho, ho, ho. You've been looking for it. You're about to get slathered with it. Up to five, six, eight inches all along the coast. These are going to be some beautiful pictures. 15 inches on the coast up here. Holy Steve, boom, go away, you fraud. You and Al can get buried. Boom, in the boom. Bury the boom in the room. Bye-bye. Yeah, we see the models. We're working on it. We have the technology to prove that it's crazy. Holy sh... I don't even want to go through these. Except you're buried. Now, here's the bad news. <coughs> Good news is if you're headed to observing the frontier, there is no blizzard. But the next weekend after that, holy macaroni. There's some heavy snow moving into northern New Max, which is your... Oh, man, look at us. We're getting buried. The entire Rocky Mountain front will be buried deep into March. We're going to have some epic runoff, amazing whitewater. I'm going to bring you videos of that. We're going to have our 15-foot crusher cataract going down Class 4 nightmares for you to watch live as this melts off. Look at the white zone on the Sierra Crest. It's not going to be over. That 10-foot of snow is going to be replaced by another 10-foot of snow. Heads up, Tahoe. Biggest season ever in probably 50 years. And some epic snow in the Olympics and picking up all the lowland snow. There are models showing snow all the way to the coast, all the way into Southern California. It's amazing. It's amazing how the powers that be are still continuing the global warming narrative. Here's your Weather Ready Nation map. Multiple threats continue from the plains to the northeast. An intensifying low pressure system brings another round of heavy snow and freezing rain across the central plains through the Great Lakes into the northeast. Heavy to excessive rainfall on the risk of severe thunderstorms will impact the mid Mississippi Valley and the Ohio Valley. Take a look. These are 54 counties in blizzard warning. That is the state line, South North Dakota and Minnesota. Say it ain't soda. Heads up. Central Iowa, Northern Iowa blizzard warnings on the county line there in the western portion of your smortion. Pink areas buried. We're talking most of Wisconsin. All the cheese is frozen over here in Michigan. The crack is frozen literally on the street corners. And winter storm watches and warnings all the way down to Oklahoma. Say it ain't soma. Give me two. That's what my therapist recommended. Bear with me. Here's a whole purple region, which means your shit's going to freeze to death. And if it's not covered, you're fluxed. Whew. I hate it when it turns purple where I live. Purple over here. Purple down there in Arizona. Cover your cactus, you bitches. We're all CIA snitches. Hit the ditches. White screen. Does anybody have a lighter? Oh, here it is. <laughs> That's amazing. Where are the donuts? Ow! I want glazed. Heat it lightly. 14 seconds in the microwave. Do it. I'm just kidding. I don't use a microwave. Steve Keely does, and he deserves his boom. Keep calm. We're halfway through. 2018 was the fourth hottest year on record. NASA and NOAA report. Not at all scientific administration. No ordinary assessment annually report. Boom! I'll give you the facts right in your face. 
UAH satellite based temperatures of the lower global atmosphere. Here is the average temperature for 2018, which puts us at 0.2 degrees C above the multi decadal average, which would be the same temperature back here, 1995. Same temperature, 2002, 2003, and 4, 2005, and 6. Same temperature. Same temperature as 1990. Heads up, 91. I knew it was global warming back then. Last year was also one of the most expensive in disaster damages, which have nothing to do with warming, temperature. But clearly here they want to show you this graph. Year-to-date billions of dollars in disaster event frequency. That means we just suck at disaster events. Disaster event frequency. This is a, a, a fraud graph because catastrophic loss of life is at a deficit of, of millions of lives. It's one of the safest times ever for decades. And the, the amount of disinformation is disgusting. You could basically, if you own a media outlet, print whatever you want with colorful pictures and say whatever you want to say. Just lie directly to the public because you own it. You own the lie. You are the lie. You are the mainstream media. Wind chill warning issued for Thursday morning. Heads up, Eastern Idaho. <laughs> Colder air and wind behind our recent storm will freeze your ass off down to 25 below zero. Where big and little Lost River Birch Creek drainage is totally freezing to death. 2 a.m. to 9 a.m. Thursday now through 9 a.m. Wind chill warning means you're going to freeze to death if you stay out longer than 10 minutes. So go inside and light a fire. Do it now. Du Bois. It's freezing out there. French, German farmers destroy crops after GMOs found in bare seeds, a.k.a. Monsanto. Bayer is Monsanto. Don't let them fool you. Bayer said on Wednesday that farmers in France and Germany were digging up thousands of hectares of rapeseed fields. That's canola oil for all you snitches. What the hell is going on? I don't want that. Genetically modified organisms banned for cultivation were found in seeds sold by the company. GMO crops are widely grown across the world. 70% of all processed food is made with that totally polluted garbage, which is filled with glyphosate, which is a chelator which means it prevents your body from absorbing nutrition. So while you eat things to make you full, it's killing you by robbing your body of nutrition. Eat organic, grow your own food, learn how, watch our channel, buy local, plant a seed, do it now. Or eat donuts when they're on clearance, they're a dollar. And drink beer and it won't even matter. You can watch like Scooby-Doo reruns and shit. Or get a job at the Weather Channel. I'm sure they have openings. Numerical cognition in honeybees enables addition and subtraction, which means that the waning bee population is smarter than most of the population. I can't even fucking believe that. Did I just read that? That just came out. <laughs> Holy shit. That just came out yesterday. Bees are smarter than half the people. Keep calm. It's bee jiffy time. I was supposed to be a bee jiffy there, and it would have been funny. There would have been bees buzzing around and stuff like that. Seismic update. No quakes a note. Si uh, space weather <coughs> shows us not coupling with any coronal holes. There is no phi angle shift that would determine lithospheric warning. Normal quakes around the ring of fire. Nothing above six mag. Volcanic activity worldwide. Fuego, Popo, Shivalush, Korangitang, Ibu, and other things exploding to thousands of feet. Shivalush, 17,000. 
Karangi Tang. The lava flow from the volcano has now crossed the coastal road and reached the sea. This is Merapi, where it forms an active delta, effectively enlarging the island a, a little bit. The lava flow is the A'a type with a typical blocky texture. This is basaltic, non-violent. No significant damage has been reported from the nearby Butalbun Bulan village, which is now cut from the eastern part of the island due to the flow. In case the lava flow widens and the eruption intensifies further, authorities have been preparing to evacuate the remaining residents. Ibu eruption today, Dukono, continuous volcanic ash, Popo. 20,000 foot explosion today. I can't get any coverage of that. I was looking. Fuego also exploding to 16,000. We're going to see some footage coming up. Quickly, you can see a picture here of Mount Marapi, Karangitang, spewing volcanic material as it erupts. Now, all the way, this lava flow has all the way to the ocean now, forming a delta. An eruption on one of Indonesia's most active volcanoes sent lava and searing gas clouds out of the crater and made villagers leave the slopes, a volcano official said Tuesday. Authorities are still trying to evacuate 600 residents cut off on the slopes of Karangitang. Volcanoes, they speak exploding. As the cosmic rays increase, we ask you to keep calm. It is boom time, after all. Popo increased today, now reporting 21,000 feet volcanic ash advisory. That's going to get you in a color zone. Non-reported. Probably a no-fly zone. Erupting, currently listed at 4 out of 5. Explosive activity continues. Volcanic Ash Advisory Center, Washington, warned about volcanic ash plume that rose to an estimated 21,000 feet altitude or flight level 210 in the last 24 hours. Let's check it live. Here we see Fuego going boom, boom. Story Alba, some activity. Here's Popo up on the right. I believe this is Saku. Marapi down here, probably currently erupting. Come over to Volcano YTS, subscribe to the channel, give them a thumbs up. Oh. <coughs> White screen. We're going to get there, kids. Have a donut. I'm going to click on this. Lot to talk about. Keep calm. I'm talking about stuff right now. Why did I get smaller? Don't go away. Let's reload it. Keep calm. I'm drinking some Wonder Drink, which is from the Oppenheimer Ranch Preparedness Store. This is green tea and lemon kombucha. I got a whole case delivered to my wilderness camp here. Took four days. I got 24 cans. I don't know how much it was. 20 bucks? Who knows? It's in the store. Delivered. I don't even have to, they don't even sell it here. Anytime I want a delicious lemon green tea kombucha, light spritzer. Oh my God. Delicious. First measurement of the magnetic field in the Earth's core. Now, if you, if you don't know, now you know. We have a new channel, Magnetic Reversal News. 24 hours it's been launched. We have 1,213 subscribers. We need to have 4,000 hours of view time before we can become an official channel on YouTube and be locked in for the long haul. Let's get her done. We've already have thousands of views in the last day, which is nice. I've uploaded all the most pertinent information if you need to know what's going on with the magnetic reversal. More, most importantly today, I uploaded a 2003. This is a 15 year old documentary that will blow your mind. It's about an hour long. It's the most important documentary you could ever watch in your entire lives. Especially if you're 50 or younger, because you're about to live through this. If you're wondering when the first measurements of this field, supposed liquid outer core with the solid inner core spinning around making a magnet was detected, the magnetic field strength is 25 Gauss at 1,800 miles underground. And a University of California Berkeley geophysicist made the first ever measurement about 15 years ago. 
and that's Bruce A. Buffett. And if you come over to our new channel, there is a one-hour documentary on the origin of Earth's magnetic field, geomagnetic excursions, and some of the most current oh. information. Um, what it shows is that the planet really... By Bruce Buffett. He used to be a professor at UC Berkeley, works at SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And he was the first person to actually measure the field at the center of the Earth. So come check out the articles if you're interested. Risk of asteroids smashing into Earth ratcheted up by space agency. <laughs> this agency, what a fraud. One of the world's foremost watchdogs for monitoring the threat of giant space rocks posed to our planet has just upped the risk level for a recent discovered asteroid. It is the plot of numerous sci-fi novels and more than a few Hollywood blockbusters. Humans seemingly have deeply ingrained fear of a big rock from space crashing into Earth and wiping out civilization. Unfortunately, it's just the sun exploding and burning the sh out of everybody. So much so that we continuously monitor thousands of objects that float around the solar system. This is simply to disinform you and to make you keep looking up for what's eventually about to hit the fan. Because once it occurs, you barely have half a day to get to safety. Now the latest update from the European Space Agency, ESA, near Earth Object Coordination Center, moved asteroid 2018 XB4, which was only discovered last year, into its top 10 potentially dangerous near-Earth objects, which means Apophis asteroid could strike Earth in 2068. According to the agency, recent observations of the asteroid have prompted the recalculation of its likelihood of impacting the planet, and now it's considered the fifth most dangerous near-Earth object in the sky. Don't panic just yet. While the asteroid's chances of sending humans the way of the dinosaurs has undoubtedly increased, it still isn't something you need to worry about for a while. In fact, the magnetic reversal and the outburst of the sun is what you should be focusing all of your attention on. Subscribe to our new channel now. After making history, NASA's tiny deep space satellite goes silent. These are little tiny cube sats that we shot out and they're now missing. The silent satellites are two Marco probes nicknamed Eve and Wally from Pixar's sci-fi movie, which flew to Mars along with NASA's InSight lander last year. And now, well, they've gone silent. Silent. They've gone silent. Keep calm. Have a have a donut. Where are the donuts? Oh God, they're delicious. Steve. <coughs> NASA's probe spots China's Chang'e four lander on the far side of the moon, doing totally top secret experiments, sampling the moon for volcanic glass and evidence of the last micronova from our sun. China's history-making Chang-4 mission has been spied by one of its robotic moon-studying brethren. NASA's Lunar Recognizance Orbit, Orbiter, the LRO, recently caught a glinty glimpse of the lander, which they want us to believe is that white dot. Right there. Okay. Now, let's get to some of the clown asses in the world that think that cannabis is the devil weed. Many of them are dying of cancer, and die they will. But this one in particular, she, she was told she would die. Canadian mom is actually now crediting cannabis oil for surviving cancer. But she was not going to smoke it. <laughs> she could suck it. I can't even believe she lived. It was 2009 when Canadian Cheryl Pearson was misdiagnosed by, with MS, and then she was dying of cancer, and they gave her a week to live and sent her home. But these two cool dudes got her some hash oil and she took it and she's fine. 100% remission. But she's still anti-smoking pot when she can suck that. <laughs> I mean, fuck her. <laughs> if you want to know about the facts, this is Rick Simpson himself from Canada. Healing cancer with cannabis. 
cutting edge stuff. Watch the video. Don't be a dogmatist. Don't save your life from cancer and still be anti-weed. Are you kidding me? You cunt. Hope you got something out of the video. Donuts and beer are not survival tools, clearly. But they are delicious. Sometimes they're on clearance. And yes, we've frozen up. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Learn to grow your own food. Get off of pharmaceutical medicines. The powers that be are not going to warn, me, warn you of this because everyone would freak out. Subscribe to our new channel now. Do not listen to Steve Keeley anymore. Be safe. We love you.